the next thing we want to do is approach we want to approach this from a performance standpoint so when we're approaching it from an, a performance standpoint we want to have a reintroductory to the sporting environment uh which which again goes to the field court uh diamond whatever we want to have a reintro reintroduction to the sporting environment believe it or not when an athlete gets injured the environment in which they were accustomed to being in every day becomes four and so because they're not practicing because they're not with the team a lot of times because they're off doing things for rehab and things of that nature especially early on early stages then re reintroductory into that environment is very very necessary because we're not only reintroducing them to the environment for a movement uh, analysis standpoint we want to introduce them into the environment from a technical tactical standpoint but we also want to re reintroduce them most of all for a comfort standpoint we want this athlete to be comfortable in the environment that they're going to be asked to be in a lot of times when you see kids and athletes return to sport they haven't been around a team. They haven't been around the coaches and things like that. So when they go back, it's basically the equivalent of me taking you and throwing you into the deep end of the pool and saying swim. And you have to catch up and then you have to um, calm yourself down, relax and things of that nature. And then you're able to go from there. And so uh, when it comes to it, reintroducing into the environment is, is very uh, uh, physiological and you want to just get the athlete comfortable with the movements, the movement patterns and things that that nature in order to be their best. Again, we're trying to get them back to baseline or above and not just get them where they're kind of close to what they were or they're good enough to play. We want to get them there and above. And so reintroduce reintroducing into the, uh, into the environment is very key. The next thing we want to talk about is the start of what we're going to do uh, on our side, as far as like the movement analysis and all that. So we want to start with, personally this is what i like to start with and you guys can you can take it and do whatever you want to with it. i personally like to start by isometrics and then we want to uh, focus on range of motion and then i want to connect the brain and body back together uh and, and reintroduce this athlete to patterns and so when we're going with isometrics we want to go with isometric holds these are going to be very isometric holds these are going to be very easy for the athlete not only to produce some muscle recruitment but also improve range of motion, improve joint stability, improve just overall health and function and joints uh, before we get back into the rigors of, you know, team, team sport or individual sport activities. And so we want to we get the most bang for our buck and isometrics is one of the cheaper ways that we can get a lot for a little without putting a lot of stress on the body, but we can get a lot for a little with those. The next thing, when I say range of motion, range of motion can be achi achieved two different ways. We can go with a cl a calisthenic type mobility, meaning no weight added, no bands added, no uh, outside or external forces added, just straight uh, body weight. Uh, body weight exercises going through range of motion, um, meaning knees over toes, uh, pull throughs, things of that nature that don't have any, like I said, no, no outside sources. So no bands, no weights, no nothing. We just are purely going through those range of motion uh, protocols with only using our body weight. And so we want to work on a range of motion because range of motion is also going to help us with being better at taking hits again, being in the awkward positions again, and also tying, tying into that is going to allow us the flexibility to have room for error without breaking something again and so that's why that range of motion is very critical and very important whenever we're coming back from sport the third thing i said was connecting the brain up to the body so you have to reintroduce patterns let's go back to the athlete i was talking about a second ago and let's say that they injured their knee and they have six months to get back and return well if this athlete has not sprinted in if this athlete has not performed a sprint in three to four months well that pattern has been lost uh it's like with any skill sprinting is a skill i've said that multiple times on this channel but sprinting is a skill and so if we don't use the skill if we don't use it we lose it so sprinting is very important and you will be amazed at how many athletes you see especially when they come back from a lower body injury and go back and try to sprint and run and look like awkward ducks which that's probably going to produce a more times than not it's going to produce a compensate a, comp a compensatory i'm sorry a compensatory pattern 
to where the athlete is uh, compensating, which will probably more times than not lead to another injury of something else because whatever the body uh, can, whatever the body deems it can let go and, and release, then that's what it will break. So we don't want to compensate too much. You are going to have some compensation patterns following injury just because it takes time for those nerves to reconnect while nerves are reconnecting they have to reconnect to the brain and things like that and so you just have to take that time to reintroduce the pattern slowly rebuild the skill reverse engineer everything and then build on top of those things like you're going from first grade to 12th grade all over again to help the athlete be the best them that they can be again remember we want to be at or above where we were before we were injured Woo, I got to take a breath and give you all a lot of information. The next thing is we want to, um, after that, after we did the iso isometric range of motion and connecting brain and body, we're also we're always going to keep those in the programming. But next, we want to jump down and want to start our straight line runs and we want to do our low impact plyometrics. Low impact plyometrics are things such as a single leg jump or you probably going to start on two legs if you have a lower body injury. I'm also one of those. I don't have it in my notes, but we're going to go from two to one. We're always going to go from bilateral to unilateral. So we're going to go from using both legs. And then eventually as we get stronger and we get more comfortable, we're going to go to one leg. It would be insane for me to start with one leg exercises following injury. It's just asinine. So um, from there, like I said, we're going to go and we're going to start with our straight line runs. So when I say straight line runs, we're, we are actually sprinting 50% and under um, – and we want to see that as clean as possible. We want to see that actually very clean at that level before we start jumping up and going 70, 80, or, or ramping up to 70, 80, 90, 100% of sprint sprint speed. That would be, again, insane for me to ask you to come back day one from injury and say, hey, I want you to run dead sprint the same way you were before before the injury, so pre-injury. Uh, again, this is where I would suggest, I would suggest because sometimes with the, with the naked eye, we can miss things. I would definitely suggest recording from the front, the side, and back of the athlete um, to just see, you know, where, where breakdown is, if there's any, and then see where you need to work up. Um, again, going to time a lot of work up to, in order to get that athlete back on the field safely. And, and, and um and just keep it there that's going to help you a lot it's going to help the athlete a lot because a lot of times if you can get that uh, i think it's like a fan pattern i may be wrong on that but if you can get that pattern going where they can see it and then that that'll help them put it into their brain like okay this is what i need to do this is why i need to uh correct it, and this is probably what i need to feel then you're going to help that athlete a whole lot in the long run because again we're trying to do a lot in a little bit of time so that window is very small depending on how many days a week you're working with the athlete things like that, that window is very, very small. Then from there, we want to go, we want to ramp up our straight line speed, go to low impact plyometric, then start working on change direction. It's like the fourth thing um, within the, the protocol of what I'm doing, my approach to performance returning from injury. So ramping up the sprint speed is uh, pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to up, increase the intensity of that. So then we're going to get into those 70, those 80 percent sprints, depending on where we are in uh, injury, uh, where we are in rehab and then where we are as far as like our time to return to sport. By the time you get to sport, we you have to. It's not that we want to, but you have to be at 100 percent or be able to do 100 percent. And, you know, we, we're going to get into to, uh, so we, we have to increase that straight line speed. Uh, again, we're going to stick with low impact plyometrics, uh, just low impact plyometrics to me. It's just safer. Uh, it makes more sense. Uh, you could go high impact, meaning like max box jumps, max vert jumps, things like that. But with jumping, again, depending on how much time you got with jumping, you just run more of a risk. Personally, this is my belief. You run more of a risk with jumping and landing versus um, <clears throat> jumping and landing from high, high, higher heights or max outputs versus uh, keeping that impact on the plyometrics low and then what stimulus are you going for? Do you just want to have a stimulus of learning, change of direction, uh, the stimulus of knowing what the what your foot should feel um, when contacting the ground? Um, you know, again, that just goes for what, what is your what is your outcome on that? So then we want to go to change of direction, change of direction. We want to start 
you know, very simple, go from 45 degrees to 90 degrees, 60 degrees, and then 180s. And then we also want to train an athlete on deceleration because if we all gas no brakes again, we're going to dip and dip our toes into the water of, um, <clears throat> we're going to just dip our toes into the water of re-injury. And we don't, we want to avoid that. Uh, if it's a re-injury from movement patterns, we want to avoid that as much as possible. Re-injury could occur from, you know, a multitude of the things, but we don't want it to be because of our movement patterns. And so our movement patterns are very important. That change direction is very important. Deceleration is very important. We also want to have those plyos very important because it's going to, plyos are going to, uh, plyos are going to not accent. What's the word I'm looking for? It just slipped my mind. The plyos are going to complement our sprint, our sprinting, because sprinting does take some form of jumping. And but we can we can work on that in a vertical and horizontal metric, and then come back from there. Um, last thing, I, like I would say, in sport, we want to continue to to once we get back to the sport. So once they get back with the team, they're playing games and and things like that. We want to continue uh, what we were doing in our approach to performance. So what we what we were doing in step two, and then we want to stay in contact with the athlete and continue working. Uh, uh, at least three to four, four weeks, three, at least three to four weeks within them uh, returning to sport just to keep everything on the safe side. And then we want to talk to the athlete just to see what he or she is feeling, uh, how comfortable they're feeling and what they're feeling. Um, you will be amazed just by conversation what athletes go through when they when they return to sport. Uh, you get a lot that may give you the false confidence, like I feel good, I feel like myself, but you don't know until you get out there on the field. We can do everything that we want to in training, but training is like level one and then actually playing is level two. Of course, everybody that's played sports naturally knows that. And so, you know, you want to make sure that you're putting yourself and positioning yourself to be in the right position, the right place, right time. And then from there, making sure that we all feel good. It's all about comfort. A lot of times with injury, if that athlete is not comfortable mentally, physically is going to show. So if that athlete has a lower body injury, let's say knee or or ankle, well, when they plant, instead of planting that foot and being confident, like my surgeon did his job, PT and OT did their job, my performance coach did his job, well, when they plant that foot and, 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 and my body's good, that's the fourth thing, they feel like my body's good. When they plant that foot, you may see them kind of favor or not really put a lot into it or slow down so much they don't have to put a lot of weight or a lot of force into the ground to change directions or or what what have you. And so that's why everything I just listed is very important. And so this was a long video, a lot longer than what I suspected whenever I was doing my notes and, and kind of outlining a lot of stuff for this for this episode and this podcast that we we've broken up. But it's all necessary. Return to sport is not easy. Return to play is not easy. Uh, this is a very nerdy video uh, for y'all. Uh, it's very nerdy. So it is what it is, man. I'm a, I'm a nerd at heart. I may look like a cool kid. And some of y'all may say I don't look so smart, but I'm a nerd at heart. But, you know, it's one of those things that you just have to you just have to keep in mind in all seriousness, because when you work with athletes and athletes are trying to come back, um, depending on what their goals are, you just want to make sure that they're comfortable in their, who they were before, if not better. Um, sometimes injuries are good because it gives us time to take a break from everything and then just work on the things that we probably should have been working on mentally and physically. And then, you know, you just come back and and play. And that's what you want an athlete to do, be free to play. You don't want them thinking about their body or thinking, uh, did I do enough or thinking I, I really can't do X, Y, and Z. You want them to be very comfortable. And so that's what return to sport is all about. And so that's my protocol for getting athletes back. If you like this content, like, subscribe, and as always, be legendary.